Hey guys, what's up? Good morning, welcome, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. So it seemed like last week these lights were washing everything out. So I don't want to wash everything out, we just want to light everything up. I don't want to turn the ceiling light on because it seems to interfere with the video. And we're dealing with a white and black Spider-Man today, so we definitely want to get some good video for that. So what did I see this week? A really neat battle damage for Tony Stark head made by somebody. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, if you're specifically going after that Mark 85 full on battle damage one, you know, Tony's crowning achievement or whatever you would call that. You know, it's hard to I think you'd want to specifically pose somebody's final demise, but it really is the end, you know? And Pepper tells them everything's cool. It's the culmination of the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. Or, you know, the Avengers Infinity War saga, or Infinity Gauntlet saga. saga. But that head sculpt looks like it would be great for that, if that's your thing. Noble Young, how you doing, man? Say well, Mason. Robert Justifan, welcome. You know, and I, and I think, I don't remember, I think this is the most expensive Spider-Man that I've purchased so far. I don't remember. You're getting a lot of 1-6 Doctor Who figures. Cool. Uh, Mainly the popular ones, the 4th, 9th, and 10th. How many Doctors have there been now? Obviously, it's... Only one Doctor Who, by the way. Any of y'all want to grab that? If you can see that, you're welcome to it. First come, first served. Um, it's all the same Doctor. I don't know if you're if you're not a Doctor Who fan. He regenerates a new body, and that's how they change actors, more or less. Pretty clever way of doing that. I've just seen these scissors, so I've got the scissors instead of my knife. But I'm a Spider-Man nut. I hope that they make all of the Spider-Man in PlayStation 4 and the multiverse. I don't know why they're not jumping on that multiverse right now. Third-party companies make us Peter B. Parker and Spider-Gwen. doesn't make any sense to me. I often wonder why Hot Toys snoozes so often on opportunities as such. Now, granted, it's difficult to keep up with getting the pieces that you want in the first place because they pay for everything. Holy smokes. Once his Bionic Man, Steve Austin, the Bionic Man, Flash Gordon, from the 1980s Flash Gordon movie or from Flash Gordon, the television series, way back in the day. Two-Face head sculpt, less than the figure. Nice. I had to get the Mondo, Mr. Freeze. Robert just fan happy Saturday. Best Flash is cool. Uh, oh, I bet I bet Flash is cool. Mark Five, is that the one with the gauntlet? Yep, that's the last one. That's the last Tony that we've seen. That's his final suit. That's the one where he goes, this is what hand was it? This hand. I am. Because Thanos goes, I am inevitable. He goes, I am Iron Man. And that was the end, right? I forget was Doctor was I forget what Doctor screwed up the count. Oh, there's a Doctor screwed up the count. What do you think about the Batman preview? The bat symbol, the gun. Really, when was this? Was this a brand new? 1985 Flash Gordon. There you go with the Queen soundtrack. Was there a Batman preview that popped last night? That I didn't see.
So my Spider-Man shelf. I've got two figures I can't even get on the Spider-Man shelf right now. My Venom and my Electro. I, I really need to invest whatever it is into a uh, an Ikea or something. Just, just even just for my Spider-Man. Something. Something. Oh, if you are um, into the uh, video games, I've got the Centipede and the Tempest. They made a Street Fighter. They now have the Change Machine uh, available, and you can get the, uh, the carpet from the arcades that you probably remember when you were growing up. Build yourself a little arcade. So one thing I... I always thought was really interesting on all the the production images of the figure it has this blue tint to it but upon examination of the actual figure from photos taken at uh, conventions and whatnot it is definitely white and black but it did look like originally there's some type of a blue tint to it so I'm anticipating it to be totally white and black here we have when you open it up of course, if you remember, these actually can be used. I swear to God, I've never seen anyone do this. But these shadow boxes are called a shadow box because you can store your figure in this. Put them on his, his display stand and stick them right back in this box. So if you don't have anything else to display your figure in, you can take all the guts out of this and stick your figure back in this and display it on the shelf in a, a, a dust-proof environment, and it's displayed. Now, I guarantee this isn't like a UV-filtered plastic or anything like that so you can't stick it in the window and expect it not to get faded out or whatever if, you, if that's the case but it really is a way to display your uh, figures if you have nothing else whatsoever uh, and like I said I've never seen anybody do that I've seen Barbie collectors do that I've never seen a a uh, Hot Toys collector do that. But if push comes to shove, and you want to take your figure out of the box, pose it, play with it, whatever else, you can stick it right back in the box and use the box as a display. Mmm. That smell. Brand new Hot Toys smell. Our Chen is young. Hero Kwan and Venom Snake. Indiana Chan and James Lee, Oliver Lee, James Lee and Fanny, Monster Jr., Cock and Tit. This is supposed to represent his spider, his Peter Tingle, by the way. This, by the way, is for ages 15 and up. It is not a toy for children under the ages of 15. Choking hazard, small parts. Uh, right here it says it is an adult collectible, ages 15 and up. So for your information, this channel is not for those under the age of 13. So for compliance with Child Online Privacy Protection Act, COPPA rules, Child Online CA, COPPA. If you're under 13, get off the channel. This is an adult collectible show. I was like a Spidey costume he wore for the Fantastic Four when Johnny died. Wasn't there a time when he like wore a Fantastic Four outfit in like a uh, unknown comic paper bag? I'm ten, Robert. Get the hell out of here. You have to go right now. Love you, but you got to go if you're under 13. Google has some sort of way of knowing how old you are. If you are logged into your account, and they report that. They say that you are being enticed by me and that your brain is too young to understand that this is... a buying decision for you or some shit like that. 
You know, it does. I don't know. There actually is a blue tint into it. Um. So anybody that's auto-corrected their photos, that's a white sheet of paper, and that's a, your Spider-Man in front of it. And I don't know how this is coming through to you, but he is blue. Matter of fact, he's turning the paper blue just a bit. So there is some blue tint to him, if y'all can see that. Very, very faint. Now, there's some blue around his spider on his chest. Um, my grandfather painted houses, and he would tell the story of the guy that wanted his house whiter than his neighbor's house. So my granddad mixed in some blue into the white paint to make the the paint whiter. Trick on the eyes. Is the dress black and blue or white and gold? Right? Our brains have to try to process what it sees. For some reason I don't see my uh, speaking of seeing for some reason I don't see my my knife anywhere. Let's take it in the other room. No, he actually has some blue to him. 21 again, I wish, right? Nah, you know what? 20... 20 something definitely, but not 21. Jeez. I made some of the stupidest mistakes in my life when I was 21. I made some of the stupidest mistakes in my life in the last six months. I guess that never stops, does it? Twenty something though for fact. Be a good age to stop at. Back to the sectagon. To think is uh what all the PS4 Spidey base stands are coming as to us at coming to us with Spidey stand. I got that head. I got that song stuck in my head. I don't remember who sang it. Um, I think it was Split Ends. I just spent six months in a leaky boat. Let's to try to stay afloat. Yada 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 da 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 da. <clears throat> so we keep getting these um, little accessories. It's fine. It's almost starting to seem like um, overkill on this. Definitely going to be lots of things to stow with, stow, stow, show, present, pose. Spider-Man with cell phone USB thing. What did Peter B. Parker call it? The Whatchamajiggy, the Zuhiggy, Whatchamacallit. There's always something he's got to stick into somewhere to make something work for something. God, I got to do something about all this glare. <clears throat> I think if these lights get turned that way, I think that helps. We have these little pieces. Oh, yeah, there's no light now. Jeez. Jeez.
two of these. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. I mean, it's Spidey's face. And I don't remember if it came with the other guys. This one's on Spider-Man. Well, let's just get them all out. Get the Spidey accessories out. Six months in on the e boat. Oh, my goodness. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I actually have nine Spider Man boxes. Ten Spider-Man boxes. Holy smokes. So let's see if these came in. Yeah, no. Wait, what's this? Advanced suit Spidey. Yeah, they're an advanced suit Spidey. Same setup as advanced suit Spidey. Is this. Um, except he has his own personal spider webbings. Web shooters. Other than that, same setup. This has been going on since Toby Maguire Spider. In here. And this one they started with. Uh, it may have been Spider Punk. I don't remember. This is a really cool one. I like to refer to it as my Todd McFarlane. Uh, obviously, he's not involved in this, but my, if I remember, my memory serves me correctly, he was the one that kind of was making the webbing just go like freaking everywhere. He has difficulty even controlling the webbing. So now they made this really neat little uh, grouping of webbing. Put the hand in here and it goes on both sides and there he's got this little group. So I like this. It's only been on just a couple of them. I think, I think it was... Spider-Punk was the first one. Might be wrong. Help me out guys if you know. The same accessories as Advanced Suit Spider-Man. I make a stupid decision each time I buy a Hot Toys. It sure seems that way. But, I sure do love my figures, man. I'll tell you what. Um, I love them. I love every one of them. It's nice to come in here and just look at them. It's a good way of, of relaxing. This is washing everything out again, isn't it? I need to put maybe a filter on the front of the diffuser. But uh, you know what I need? I need to put, like, a t-shirt over them. That would stop it. Something. Just way too much light. It's either too much or not enough. Let me turn the overhead light on see if that makes any difference. Yeah, last week's video wasn't good. Uh, Jason, I'm doing well, thank you. Did you see the, the Batman preview of Unconscious? No. The gun is the bat symbol. Really? No, I didn't. The second person that asked that. Bought another G QMX Kirk. Put him in next to God. Nice. He looks like anti venom. Yeah, I agree with you. Have I have I seen Picard? I did, and I like it. I seen the very first episode because it's free on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, you can find it on YouTube. It's free for the first episode, and I was really impressed. I was really impressed. Um, it is available on uh, Netflix for people outside of the United States. 
you live in the United States, you're going to have to use some other form of viewing Netflix to see it if you're going to do that. Or maybe it was Amazon Prime. I don't remember which. One of the two, it's available outside of the United States and not in the United States. Other than that, if you live in the United States, you have to buy it with CBS All Access, $6 a month or whatever it is. But I was really impressed, really, really impressed. It, uh, it's the TNG storyline or history. It's not Discovery and it's not the Kelvin history. Kelvin line. The eyeball just fell clean out. And Patrick Stewart is reprising his role well. And the other characters that they've brought in so far. If you've not seen it, go check it out. And like I said, it's free on YouTube, no matter. <clears throat> I don't remember what it was on, Amazon Prime or Netflix. If you're outside of the United States, one or the other. But if you're in the United States, CBS All Access. Yeah. After it was all over, I, I looked at my wife and I'm like, for real, dude, we need to get CBS All Access. And, and she's like, no, we can't afford it. And I'm like, it's $6 a month. Or whatever it is, $6.99 something. She's like, no, we can't afford it. Sometimes I'm told that because, you know, I'm spending money on hot. I'm spending money on hot toys. Don't tell me about it. So you know how that goes. CBS All Access or Hot Toys? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. So this guy literally just fell clean out. His little eye did here. Leaving the magnet in the socket. I don't know if you can see that there. The little magnet is still in the socket. <clears throat> so what do we do? We super glue. Because you can't be a Hot Toys collector without having a collection of super glue. They go hand in hand. They should just include. They should just include a tube of super glue in with your Hot Toy. Right? What's this? Well, that's to repair your hot toy. What? You have to repair your hot toy? Well, you mean, you mean you don't never have to repair other toys that you buy? Straight out of the box? You've never had to do that? You're kidding me. Especially after spending over $200 on it? Dabble, do you? By the way, uh, I don't recommend taking apart your Doctor Strange images of Icon arms to fix anything. I did, and I regretted doing it. Uh, I was able to get them back. It wasn't pretty. Not at all. Where did I put those arms at? It didn't turn out well. They work. They don't look like they've been opened up. Don't open them up, dude. Do not. The magnets go out of... Dude, I'm telling you, like one of the magnets just shot clean across the room. I was like, well, that's lovely. Had to bust out the magnetic sweeper to find the doggone thing after that. Really easy to get this out, this press up here. Literally just rocks in place. We're going to let this one with the uh, super glue holding the magnet in for a minute sit. We have two other exchangeable eyes with this. He feels like the other spider man that have been coming out lately. The material. So we don't have a kill mode eyes. Or death mode, I forget what it was. So we have wide open, we have squinted, 
So all the way closed more or less. And then we have one level above squinted open. So we don't have anything between like narrowed eyes. So squinted, narrow, regular, and then like wide open. Maybe wide open is even regular. And it, there may even be a larger opening um, diameter than what's on this one even. I forget which one of these has the absolute most eye sockets. But you only get two, two other pairs of interchangeable eyes on this. And you know, I, to some degree, it's like, unless you're doing like 3D modeling or taking photographs of your, of, uh, you know, 3D, not modeling, 3D uh, movies, animated movies. You're going to put the eyes in, you're going to leave them for the most part. That's all the way squinted down, if you can see that. Jeez. Guys, I'm so sorry. And then the next one up. And then the default. Nice. So it's all the way squinted. And there's the default. By the way, I've been watching Better Call Saul. If y'all ever watched Breaking Bad, they made a prequel television series to that uh, with Saul Goodman, the attorney. That's how he became where he is. Season 4 just popped on Netflix. It's only 10 episodes. Amazing show. We get Mike Arentrout back. It's so funny, my wife's like, let's watch Breaking Bad. I'm like, I want to watch a show about drug addicts. And it's really not. It's really interesting Quite interesting television show. If you've never seen it, I recommend it. And a movie called El Camino that continued the story. And evidently that's being made into a series now as well. Really like that. Um, three Way or Somebody Made, Jesse Pinkman and... Um, Gosh, Mr. White, forget their names. And Saul Goodman has even been made into a figure. It's interesting that these are gray. Season one, if a card is over, right? That's what I was thinking too. I was like, why buy it and then have to sit here and wait? My goodness, I have to sit here and wait every single week for each episode to come out. Just buy it at the end, however many they make. But it looks really good. Really, really. I mean, I watched the first one and that was really good. I'm really loving Spider-Man getting this treatment, this, uh, give them all to us. You know, we've seen the high velocity suit preview to us, but how many previews have we seen that never went into production? We also seen the, what was it? Captain American Civil War at the end of it, where we presented them with the iron spider suit. Or a suit that resembled the Iron Spider, whether it was the Iron Spider or not, I don't really know. In a display case, that looks really cool. There is a company, I think Toys Box makes a display case. The Hot Toys showed us one. And they made a little mini one, which I guess is what, four inch figures or something? And on that one, they made a couple other spiders that we don't have yet from Spider Man PS4. And I hope that they make every single one, every one of them, for fact. Really and truly, I do. I buy all that junk. Buy it all. My wife says she's on the mend, in case any of you all are um, curious. She 
it's on oxygen tanks now because their oxygen demand is far greater than what a portable unit can provide her. So at the house, she uses a concentrator. But should she ever leave the house, which she hasn't left the house now, for months, um, she'd have to take an oxygen tank with her. Because her oxygen demand is greater than what a portable oxygen unit can provide her. The oxygen units only go up to four liters, and they work on what's called pulse. Pulse. So when it feels you, when it feels you breathe in, that's when it delivers the oxygen. It doesn't deliver oxygen unless you yourself breathe in. And if you're incapable of breathing on your own because you are on a non-invasive ventilator, then it won't work. If you're not sucking in the breaths, it's not going to give it to you. That's how she's doing. Thought I had coronavirus, man. I got so sick a few weeks ago. I had to go to the emergency room. Nothing. Regular old cold, sinus infection. But she's the media sure does get you freaked out, man. My God, I got coronavirus. I'm gonna die. Just a cold. Just a cold. I'm gonna, I need to pull all my stuff off eBay. I do. I've been meaning to do that for the last week. Um, I'm, I, uh, I, I, I paid the bills that needed to be paid. It got the debt collectors off our ass. Uh, but I don't want to have to sell anything at all. I never wanted to sell anything at all. As it is. Spider-Man Negative Suit 1-6 scale collectible figure. Shows how to push up here at the upper right corner. Take the eyes out. We already figured that. Uh, it says arm movement is 90 degrees out. So that's 90 degrees. Right there. It says elbow movement is 120 degrees. Double jointed elbow. Bicep pivot. Here's your 120 degrees, right there. Love this guy. Um, claims a 90 degree front kick. That's a 90 degree front kick. No doubt about it. 60 degree ankle pivot. Toe articulation. 120 degree knee bend. Double jointed D. Can't quite kick his own butt. Thigh pivot. 40 degree toe bend. It says, do not push down on this. A couple of the other suits have this too. It says, don't push on that. You'll rip it clean off of the suit if you do. It says, Marble Hot Toys 2019 on his feet. And so he's four colors, really. You got white, black, dark gray, and then the blue accenting around the spider symbol. I'm curious if that is UV. I don't want to mess around with all the way at the top shelf with my... Okay, this is pretty shitty. Um... You see that terrible stitching seam on that? So here's a clean seam. And so obviously they stitch it, it onto the body and they could have done a much better job than that. That was the final spot. So there's no zipper in the back, um, which is nice, keeps it clean. And I guess, you know, with the arms down, you're really not gonna see that. And only if you're looking for it are you going to see it. But uh, I've seen better final seams than that. That's pretty piss poor.
Uh, let's see. This is, this is the weapon wielding hand is what they call this. So holding those little sticky bombs. And this one with the thumb up is for holding the USB device. And this one with his relaxed grasping hand is for holding the cell phone. So I've never done this. I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to put the spider sense behind Spidey. I've never done that. There's instructions on how to do that. It says one. Flip forward the little um, piece here. So there's a little cutout around that. I'm going to flip that forward. As such, and it says remove the head sculpt. It appears from the photograph that this then goes onto the peg, right in the center of the peg. There were the neck of the peg is between the two ball joints. Then you just snap this back on to the ball joint. And that gives a really neat effect of the Peter Tingle. I like it. Let's get some eyeballs in him. Well, this little magnet's been in there long enough. I mean that looks cool with the black, but come on, we need to see his eyes, right? I like the Peter Tingle. I like the Peter Tingle. To get a pair of um, wrist joints. So in all, you have Two fists, and they are not capable of holding webbing. Traditionally, without being modified. One fist that is capable of holding webbing, hold on both sides or hold all the way through for shoving the webbing through and or holding the USB stick. You get one kind of like a peace sign, but it's actually the weapon's gripping hand. Two of these stick it to the wall or, or uh, applying himself spider hands. Doing his little spider fingertip push-ups. One peace sign, posing peace sign or whatever. Two of the lazy I love you spider twips. One relaxed grasping hand, kind of like what you see with the Iron Man hands. Uh, it's for designed to hold the iPhone or Android device, and then two relaxed hands. Literally just relaxed hands. We get three different web shooters, and I don't know what the difference in these web shooters are. I don't know why you would want one over the other, to tell you the truth. Uh, 
Imagine if he played the game, it would tell you what each one does. Have a look at them. Um, there is a hole on each one to stick a webbing into. It's cool. One of the figures, I think it's not a Hot Toys. Um, one six re-edit Iron Spider doesn't come with any way of attaching webbing, so I've kind of like shoved it under his arm, at his wrist to get it in there. I want to get the UV down here to see if it's uh, if, if he does does what you do in the UV light. You know what I want to do. All them up there. I don't know if you guys will see that. But I'll be able to give you a solid support. Uh, the blue is more defined under the UV lighting. That's cool. So the blue on his chest really stands out um, under the UV light. Other than that, it kind of turns the suit all purple. It really makes the blue on his spider symbol stand out more. But it turns the suit purple. I'm curious how the suit compares to like the advanced suit. That's what really comes to my mind looking at this. Is the advanced suit in its design? Let's get the similar suits over here. Now let me just get all the PS4 suits over here. Except for like the iron suit suit and the uh, MCU suit. The start of his prime Spider Man. Spider-Punk. What was this one called? Ben Riley, right? Scarlet Spider. the camera off of spider punk they're on advanced suit spidey all right so simple enough it is uh, what my original thought was same style suit in regards to the design of it as the advanced suit spider here. It's fine by me. It means they only had to design it once and then just color it. And hey, I'm all for that. Knock it out, man. However many you can make from this mold, you go for it. Take every one of them. So it's a repaint, guys. It's a repaint. Some of y'all like to toss that word around. 
more often than it really deserves to be. But exact same suit. Advanced suit, Spidey. And like I said, this is the camera that actually comes with Scarlet Spider. And they give you the articulated pose rod. But as you see, I'm using crotch grabbers. So if you're planning on sticking them in the air, this will be great for that. And um, just unscrews. So in case you want to put a longer one in there or even a thicker one in there. But I prefer to use these for like uh, uh, Iron Man, the die cast figures, right? The heavier duty rod. And he's been standing on his own here, except for when I gave him a little tip. So he stands well on his own. And because I have, I mean, I've cram-packed the shelf with these guys, and he's going to be shoved in there as well. They're all just in this pose, this pose to make them take up as least amount of three-dimensional space as possible. So I'm not taking into consideration the MCU or, well, the MCU Spideys. These are your PS4 Spider-Mans by Hot Toys so far. I did not see the Disney MCU preview of uh, Wanda and Winter Soldier, uh, Wanda and Vision, Wanda Vision. And uh, Winter Soldier, I did not. Twenty nine nine suit, yeah, both of them, right? Um, I like to get the spirit suit, the one with the like the Ghost Rider head. I think that would be a cool one to have. Definitely in high velocity because they've already shown it to us. Big time Spidey would be cool with the green, the black suit with the green, radioactive or whatever it is, like looking Spider emblem. It's a fact. Yeah, Miguel O'Hara. Shoot, yeah. Uh, I, I definitely want all the Spider-Men from the Spider-Verse. So let me get Spider-Noir, Spider-Ham. What's her name? Penny. Of course, Spider-Gwen. I've got Spider-Gwen on order. Third-party manufacturer. I forget who it was that made it. Um, I'm all for that as well. I hope they make them all. So Hot Toys has been acting so weird. I mean, for real. It's not like they're not making money hand over fist. I don't know why they're they're teasing these figures and then not producing them. And when you when it sits on pre-order for a freaking year, they know exactly how many to manufacture. If you pre-ordered 150 of them, manufacture 150 of them. So what, you take a loss and you make $10 a piece on them. Be freaking whoop. Out of the ones that you sold 10,000 of and then reissued again for sold another 15,000 of them, pretty sure you made your money back. But you only paying to make the ones that you made. If you're not sitting around with them sitting on the shelf, not anymore, you make us wait a freaking year for them. Come on. There's no reason why they couldn't just crank every one of them out. That's I, for real. That's my opinion on that. There's no reason they couldn't. I'm not shoving this back in here. This needs to come out. For real. Lack of sales is baloney. They're on pre-order. Don't make them until you sell them. And then make the number of ones that you sell. Hello? How do they not figure that out? Well, we didn't make them because there wasn't enough pre-order excitement. How many did you have to make? You're telling me for fact that you don't have people like sitting around in the warehouse just cranking these bad boys out all day long? Whatever it is that you need, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I call bull. 
Thank you very much, Rick. Thank you. Uh, I was afraid of the corona, too, especially buying stuff from China, right? Kind of scary. Oh, diagnosed sticking. Somebody slept while using the machine. Oh, the stitching. Yeah, right? Um, you pre-order Battle Damage Thanos. I have not yet. I'm still on the fence on that. If I hadn't pre-ordered the Infinity War Thanos already... I would have definitely ordered the Battle Damage Thanos. But we still don't get, like, the Battle Damage Thanos. The Thanos after the finger snap, where the whole gauntlet is shriveled onto his arm and it's just a worthless stub now. We don't get that one. I was wondering why not just buy the Thanos today that came with the chair, right? I love it. Get the rest later, it'll be cheaper, I think. I have the Thanos in the chair. He sits back there. Came from Guardians of the Galaxy. And uh, he's not true to scale in comparison to the, the new, new Thanos. He's actually shorter. But he stays in his chair, so you really can't tell. Wish Hot Toys did a McFarlane Spidey. Well, that would just be like any Earth 616 Spider Man, right? Truthfully. Uh, I want the other Scarlet Spider to go with my other one. I want the other Scarlet Spider to go with my other one. Buzz Lightbeer! Lightbeer. How's it going, man? Welcome to the channel. So, we just unboxed the Negative Suit Spider Man, which I've Come to the conclusion that he's not a true black and white. The white actually does have some blue in it. I also came to the realization that the UV light does cause this blue shadowing around the spider symbol to stand out more. Which is a nice effect. We put on this Peter Tingle on here. Which snaps on to the, to the neck joint uh, in between the head and the shoulders. Looks really good. It's the only one I have on there. Why not have it with the black and white? right? And we compared the suits. So it's actually the same suit as the advanced suit. The negative suit Spidey and the advanced suit Spidey. Same suits. Different color scheme. Exact same suit design. And that's the same amount of accessories. The same accessories that came with the advanced suit Spider-Man. Uh, I didn't check the eyes on advanced suit. See if it's the same eyes. Let's have a peek here. Same eyes. Same eyes. Let's see about the hands. Same hands. So essentially, it's the same suit Spidey all the way down to the accessories. Just, just repainted. I don't like using that term. It really isn't. It's not like they took this off the shelf and then painted it. I mean, it came made to be this. It did use this molding, though, or this uh, 3D design or whatever the case to send to the fabricators. They just said, make this, or instead of it being red, white, and blue, make them black, white, and blue, or gray. That's what they did. That's not really a repaint. I hate when you guys use that term. Repaint. It's a repaint. It's not a repaint. Not a brain tumor. Is next month when um, Toy Fair is? Is that in March? Or is that in May? When's Toy Fair? That would be our, our next big reveal of figures. They had the Chinese New Year a couple weeks back, so a lot of people took time off for that. Over there on that side of the country. Of the world. I've got uh, Jose Gonzalez. 
um, Vampire Relic that I'll be unboxing. It's the third Fison Vampire Relic that they've made. They have another one that I passed on. Only because, same thing it is with Thanos. How many do I need? It's not like Spider-Man, where every single one is, like, different. Vampire Relics are just starting to... The difference on them is so minor. And it's funny, you know... I harp all day about the differences on Deadpool. I harp all day on the differences between Iron Man, and they may actually be minor. I harp all day on the differences on the Spider Man, and there are differences in the Vampirellas, but I think three is enough for me. Unless they make like a totally different one, but I, I, I passed on the uh, I forget her name of the new one that they have available, and each one just continues to go up in price as well. So it costs you more and more and more and more to get her. But the good thing is, if you don't have a Vampirella and you want a really good looking figure, you can get a Vampirella. She's a hot figure. Got her next to my Lady Deaths. Got version 1, version 2. Got two version 1s and then the one version 2, Lady Death. I do not. I need to get Toby Spider. I need to get a black and white spider. I mean, not like the white and black, but the black pre-Venom spider. And I need an Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. Sure do. Those are my wish list spideys. Even though I've seen some problems with those figures, uh, people reported issues with them, I still want them. And on top of that, they're part of the PS4 grouping anyhow. So, Hot Toys, you are talking about how people are, like, uh, always saying, like, oh, yeah, Hot Toys is reissuing the Mark 47 because of the scalpers. Yeah, bullshit. If they were, they'd be reissuing the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man and the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man that they made. They haven't. They haven't reissued those Spider-Men. Why not? They don't give a shit. They really don't. They're about the bacon the buck. They're about selling as many figures as they can. But they don't care about you. I'm sorry. Howard isn't laying in his bed at night wondering on whether or not you're able to afford his hot toys. He is because he wants to make sure the money keeps coming in, but he doesn't care that you can't buy one from the scalper. He sold his allotment. He sold however much it was that he needed to make for his minimum purchase requirements in order to get them fabricated by his company that makes them. He may be making them all in-house. He may not be farming any of it out, but he's sold his minimum requirement. He doesn't have to sell more Mark 47s. At base price, to turn a buck. And uh, the Mark 47 is a great figure, but it's not that great of a figure. I think the problem with the Mark 47 was it was the first Spider-Man movie, more or less, as a standalone Spider-Man. And uh, I don't think there were as many Hot Toys collectors then as there are now. And I think that's when... The Hot Toys started getting their first uh, large surge of collectors coming in. I think probably the Infinity War was the next big surge of collectors coming in. So people are coming in, they're like, holy smokes, I need to get that Mark 47 because he's badass. And he is. And that's what the problem was. I don't think he sold well originally, and he sold out. And then it became, oh my God, I've got to get the Mark 47. That's what made it a high demand item. Because people wanted it and didn't sell many of them. And no, Hot Toys don't give a shit if you pissed, if you passed on it. They really don't. Howard didn't care. He sold his. So if he cared about that, he would be reissuing the Toby and the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. Or even re revamping them and making them better. Because I understand there's some issues with the suits. But uh, no, I don't have them and I really want them. I really do. They're, they're part, of my, part of my grails, if you will. The Spider-Man. So I love Toby. Toby's my Spider-Man. Tom Holland has fit the bill wonderfully, and I would love to see a crossover. They did a great job in, in, the, in the animated version of doing the multiverse. Now do a live action. Do one with Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland as a crossover. That would be great. That would be stupendous. That would be wonderful. And get Tom Hardy in there, too. You combine it all up. That would be the shit. That would be 
doing it Marvel style. Hell, and then do a DC Marvel cross up. You get a good Batman, right? Yeah, I'm with you, Thanos for fact. Um, so I've got, I've got the uh, Infinity War uh, Thanos, and then I've got the End Game Thanos that I've ordered. And I've got the Guardians of the Galaxy, so I'm with you. I've got all three of those, you know, waiting on, obviously, in-game Thanos to arrive. But the defeated one, battle-damaged one, only because I'd already ordered the in-game, pre-ordered that, put down the $47 or whatever on that. And uh, I'm sure if you ask nice and sweet and whatever else, they'll move the money around for you. I don't know. I can't tell you for a fact. I guess it would depend on who it was you're speaking to at that moment. But they probably would move your money onto the battle damaged one uh, if need be. But I I don't know. I don't know. That's just my ramblings and thought on that. Um, they squeeze the body in the suit and close it by hand stitching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that so that was where you know it came together. So this was where the opening of the suit was as they were putting the stuffing the body in there, and then they hand stitched it. But I, I've seen better stitch jobs than that. That's just really, it's not really good. It really isn't. So, but it, it's you can't really see it. So it is what it is, right? What are you getting future-wise, maybe, or eyeballing? Um, I've got um, the Punisher Daredevil, or, I mean, Punisher War Machine coming on pre-order, whatever year that comes in. Uh, I've got everything on pre-order, pretty much. The only thing I've passed on is uh, the Thanos, and... Something else that I passed on. But other than that, I've, I've got them all coming. It's just a matter of waiting years for them to arrive. I've got two Marvel, Captain Marvel's coming. I imagine those will be happening soon. And uh, there's another one I bought two of. Two Hawkeyes. Coming because one's Ronin and one's Hawkeye. And I wonder if we're going to see some Ronin in the Black Widow movie. You know what I mean? It'd be interesting to see if he pops in there. Of course, Robert Downey Jr. is rumored to be in that movie, and that's where I think we're going to see uh, a Mark 48 49 answer. Even though you guys say that the person that designed the Pepper Potts rescue suit put the 49 on there out of his whim. I have a hard time with that. I struggle with that. I really do. I don't believe that to be the case. But I think Robert Downey Jr. is going to make an appearance as Iron Man in Black Widow. So we'll be seeing that soon. And that's May. First weekend of May is when that comes out. Uh, I've got my R2-D2 that's been paid for. He's on his way. So after Jose Gonzalez Vampire Rella next week, I'll be unboxing the Hot Toys R2-D2 with every single... Um, attachment on him from I believe the first three movies and I don't mean episodes one two and three I mean episodes four five and six which originally weren't called episode four five and six at the theater um, we knew that it was episode four anyone that was a huge Star Wars fan because George told us there was prequels to this and this is the middle grouping of nine movies or stories he had said that so but other than that we didn't know it was as Episode 4. We didn't call it Episode 4 in New Hope. It was Star Wars. That's what it was called. <clears throat> My maybe's 1980 Flash Gordon. Tom Baker, Doctor Who. Uh, and Mondo, Mr. Freeze. I can't remember who Tom Baker was. I remember as a kid watching Doctor Who episodes, but really not understanding what was going on. It was science fiction. It was on PBS. It was British. So it was cool. 
what when they brought back Doctor Who when was it like 2007 or something oh that was amazing and then we went through a couple doctors there and uh, and I watched all those as they were coming out and I kind of fell away from watching them and then they had that spin-off uh, television series I forget what it was called but um, yeah that really was really well done those Doctor Who's such an amazing story Ming the Merciless. Rick, thank you. Got to take my dog for a walk. Been getting lunch. Tell the wife. I hope she gets better soon. I will tell her, and she appreciates hearing that from you guys. She does. Everyone loves to be acknowledged. Everyone loves to know that somebody gives a damn. I mean, for real. All we do in our existence is pray that somebody remembers us. I forget who was that said it. The only sure thing in life is death. Without it, for without it, man would not strive to leave his mark upon the earth. And literally, that's how we all are. You, know, you, you hope that you leave some impression somewhere that you're not forgotten. Not a one of us has cheated death yet. And, you know, we all pay the, pi pay the price. All of us have to go that journey sooner or later. And we all hope it's later rather than sooner, truthfully. It's always tragic whenever um, somebody at the height of their career, like Kobe Bryant or his daughter at such a young, tender age to move on to their next life, it's really absolutely tragic you know, because we think of all the things that they could still do or never had the opportunity to do, and that always sucks. Um, but yeah, every one of us had to pay the price sooner or later. We all hope it's later, and I hope my wife lasts many, many years I would love to have her at least another 20, right? That's the hope. It's said to be stock material of Tony Stark in Black Widow. I see unused or deleted scenes from Civil War. Okay. Even though it's always good to see my favorite billionaire. I like that when they said, um, take away the suit, what do you have? And he says, what did he say? Playboy genius, Playboy genius billionaire philanthropist. I think that's what he says. Playboy genius billionaire philanthropist. <laughs> the fourth, Tom Baker. Uh, ninth, Dr. Chris Eccleston. Tenth, David Tennant. And so on. Matt, Matt Smith then kind of went lagging. Just saw Dr. Sleep sequel to The Shining. It was pretty good. Uh, not great, but worth a watch. You know what I always get a kick out of is when they do the Christmas episode uh, with Doctor Who. It seems no matter what, for the Christmas episode, London or England or something, the Earth gets destroyed. It seems to be like the Christmas present, the destruction of of either either the city or the planet or something is being destroyed on the Christmas episode. It's like a, a running joke, it appears. What exactly is this supposed to be? I mean, it's it's webbing. Is it supposed to be like stuck on the wall behind him? It's supposed to be on his feet? Is it supposed to be like splat stuff? You're like supposed to stick it on the wall and, and make it out like it's supposed to play out? I really don't know, to tell you the truth. What is this? What is it, guys? I'm asking you guys because I don't know. What is the status or what is the purpose of this this webbing? What have you all done with it? In your posing. It came with two or three of the Spider-Men. This webbing did. Don't know what to do with it, truthfully. I wonder if you're supposed to, like, stick it to the glass in your Detoff. And, like, shoot some webbing on it, like, as if he's splatted it. Or if that's where he's hanging from or something. Iron-on? I don't think it's an iron-on. Um, let me examine it. I think it's a vinyl. Arnold Conan the Barbarian. You know, that would be cool. I'd like to have one of those. 
I could definitely see that in my collection. At least the head sculpt and, and the outfit made by somebody, right? And then put it on a Fison body. Fison makes some pretty badass male bodies, from my understanding. I have not bought a Fison male body. I bought a handful of uh, Fison female bodies. To do different, you know, figures over the years. I'm going to peel this off, this little piece of cardboard, there's no specific little area that I've found so far where it comes off of. Yeah, I'm really excited about the Black Widow though, really am. Taskmaster, what's her sister's name in it? Is she a Marvel character? The other one? I did think it was cute in Spider-Man Far From Home when he gave him the glasses and, he, and it was called Edith. You've been dead, I'm the hero. <laughs> God, that's so stupid. I love it. Edith. Okay, so talk about the uh, the Fison guy bodies. Uh, how do you know which one you want? And do they come, I've heard they come with um, the male private parts. Is that true? Because obviously the female Fisons, the most of them, some of them don't. Most of them come with the proper female parts on them. Some of them don't. Some of them don't come with nipples. Some of them don't come with uh, the nethers of a female. Um, but some of them do. Most of them do, actually. So, if mine are saying, I think the Fison male figures do, right? Is that true? And how do you know which one you want? How did Which one did you buy for Captain America? Because they're what? They're like M, M40-something or something? Is that what the number's on them? I've never looked into them. I've not kitbashed a, a male figure yet. I did. That's not true. I kitbashed my Loki... And I kit bashed my Obadiah. But on both of those, I just used the Hot Toys body. Oh, and I kit bashed my Mark V racing suit, the Iron Man Mark V racing suit. So I did kit bash three male figures. I didn't use Bison bodies, I used just Hot Toy bodies. Oh, and I kit bashed my Johann Schmidt. God, the more I think about it. So I've kit bashed four male bodies. Didn't use a Bison for any of them. Well, Conan, for fact, you got to use a Fison. I am having a hard time with this. So, then you all have any idea exactly what this is supposed to be done with? A little globbing of webbing on this little piece of cardboard here. No one's typing anything yet. Okay, so M34 and M35. I think 34 is better, not so bulky. Okay. So the 35 is more Arnoldy. Would that be a way of putting that, you think? 34 is more Captain America-y, Chris Evans. Um, because, you know, Chris is built. But he was never bulky like Arnold was or still is. So if you're doing this a regular conversion... M34, you're saying, right? Thicker and bulky. So when they make a Conan, that would be the one. Dudes, I am still for real messing with this. There's no anything on here. And I think it's a vinyl applique for attaching to, like, a piece of glass, like, in a Detoff. Or Detoff, whatever you call it. Display case. I'm going to take this off. I'm not going to be able to get it back onto the cardboard. I can't get it off the cardboard in the first place. Well, Robert, do they come with that? Do they all come with that? And 
I'm sure female collectors are like cool with that or whatever. Maybe they want to have a naked figure lying about. Guy collectors kind of like, I guess, the girl body parts. I thought it was funny when I heard that they did that, but no, I've never seen that. I suppose if you wanted to make sure that your figure had everything properly positioned in his suit, you would do that, right? Wearing a skin-tight suit. Some of the ladies want to make sure that he's got his stuff where it's supposed to be. The Big Vulture from Jazz. So I got the land speeder, and I'm happy to have it. Okay? And it was well priced. But I expected it to be more like a model, per se. A lot of plastic pieces in it. You know what I mean? And it, it really. It really wasn't. Uh, I'm uh, a little disappointed in it. I, I guess I'm not disappointed considering the price was only 400 bucks in comparison to, like, what is it, a Blitzway Ghostbusters at $1,300 or whatever that is, or I'm pretty sure the Tumblr is also up there in price, and, and the, the DeLorean is up there in price. But I don't think they're made out of, like, polyresin. And this one six scale land speeder is mostly poly resin. And so what scares me then is will the one six scale Millennium Falcon cockpit and the one six scale vulture will they be made of poly resin? I mean If poly resin works for you or whatever in regards to what you're doing, I can see why you would use it as a medium for fabricating a product. But I just thought that the land speeder should have been more plastic instead of poly resin. So I'm curious if anybody has any knowledge on that vulture piece. Is it going to be manufactured like the Falcon over here? You know? Is it going to be manufactured like an Iron Man or a war machine? Or is it going to be manufactured like this land speeder? And what sucks is Jazz makes them kind of like how I was talking Hot Toys needs to make them. He only makes whatever is ordered. He might have a second run on them or a re-issue, but it's not like he's going to be making them and having them sitting on the shelf. So either you pre-order it or you don't. Man, I really want it. I love Michael Keaton. I thought he did a great job bringing the Vulture to life. And Hot Toys teased us with it and showed this beautiful 1-6 scale Vulture. And then when they made the one quarter scale uh, Spider-Man, they have him part of the base. And that got everyone excited for a minute when they showed that base. They're like, yeah, they're actually going to make the one six scale vulture, and then it was just really a, just a showing off of the base for the one quarter scale um, Spider Man, or whatever that was that they were doing. It was one quarter Spider Man, I guess. But what the fuck? What is this? For real, dude? Tell me. I don't know. It's like a globbling of of webbing, and I'm not able to get this cardboard off of it. And I, I kind of also don't want to get the cardboard off of it, but you really can't see what it is with the cardboard on it. But it's like this webbing, webbing splotch. And I'm curious what you guys do with this. I can't find a, a corner or an edge where this wants to separate. Uh, so you're saying they re-engineered the Vulture as it, was, as it was too heavy. So that tells me polyresin. Polyresin is heavier than plastic. In the first place, even the one from Hot Toys on display needed a special stand, and it will cost like 600 bucks. You know, I would pay $600 for it. If it was quality material workmanship. You know what I mean? I paid 400 bucks for the Hulk and, and um, Iron uh, uh, Mark 38 Igor. 400 bucks for these 
for these uh, four hundred and fifty dollars for these Iron Man now. So next to one hundred fifty bucks for a huge figure. He's like two feet wide. I think he's like two feet from here to here. He's immense and he's he's articulated uh, in at least the uh, the spinning of the little rotors that he flies with. I don't I don't think the the wings will probably do much moving, but he's doggone cool. Um, and you'll never see the Michael Keaton head sculpt on it. Jazz won't be including one. Um, and I love Michael Keaton. And it's funny, every time I see a DC, a, a, an actor who portrayed a DC character in a Marvel movie, I get a kick out of that. Um, and really, Keaton did an unbelievable Batman, and Jack Nicholson did an unbelievable Joker. Heath Ledger did an unbelievable Joker. I don't know how Joaquin Phoenix did. I haven't seen it. But he pissed a lot of people off, so I guess I'm going to say he must have done a pretty good job. I don't understand why people got angry over the Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Get over it. I bought that 66 Batmobile. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Put the penis. Put the penis on. Robert said, put the penis on Ken. <laughs> I didn't mean to, I meant to, I meant to uh, put it on there so everyone could see that. And I clicked the wrong button. I do not like the speeder much, land speeder, uh, but I think they upped their game a little. I don't think the vulture will be cast in the same resin as it will be too heavy. Uh, they say it will be done all over again i hope so look at youtube reviews on that web thing well thank you robert i think i'll have to do that uh which is your favorite of these four what four moose wizard which four do you have in mind for me to examine you mean these four Scarlet Spider, only because of my history with him. Uh, when I was reading the comics in the 90s and he was first introduced, I thought he was a spectacular character. Wonderful story. Great backstory. Believability. Uh, and uh, I think he brought a, a pretty good fresh face to the whole Spider-Man thing. And this is different than the comic 1993 or two or four or whatever it was that um, it, I think it must have been 94 or 95 that uh, Ben Riley came out in the comics. Um, he didn't have the ninja foot, so there was no split toe, if I remember correctly, on his uh, feet. And the arms on the um, hoodie he ripped them off, so they were kind of like jagged and, and shattered, tattered um, from that. Other than that, it's a really real good homage, real good uh, depiction or respect to that uh, Spider-Man. So I love the Scarlet Spider for that reason of my personal connection with falling in love with um, the Scarlet Spider when he was a character way back in 1995. And uh, so I like him the most because of that. Uh, and he comes with a lot of stuff. Like I said, this camera on the advanced suit spider actually comes with the Scarlet Spider. And I think he comes with, I think he's the one that also comes with the pizza. And I think a coffee or something. So you get this little uh, New York style pizza in a box with a, uh, an extra slice that you can take out. And the whole pizza there. And I think it comes with the drinking cup too. Uh, let's see. Scarlet Spider. Comes with this little, um, and a donut. This little um, coffee cup. Actually says, enjoy your 
cup of coffee. So it comes with a lot of stuff. And stuff is fun. It's fun to get stuff. It comes with an iPhone with an image on it. And a donut. The same donut we get from the Iron Man Mark IV. From where Tony's sitting up in Randy's donut. Giant donut. Um, so yeah, this one of my four is my favorite of the four. I would have to say. Only because of my personal connection with him. Other than that, you know, it's like having four children and trying to say which one is your best kid. You're going to love every one of them equally the same, truthfully. I wish they'd stayed with the first guitar design that they made over the over this one. Um, but I think neither of them resemble what the guitar was in the, the game. So it's not accurate to the game, if I remember correctly, looking at the images of the, of the guitar in the game. But uh, I, I think Spider-Punk is cool. I don't remember him being in the comics. Maybe he was. He must have been. Because they claim that this one is the only one that was made outside of the comics. So in the Advanced Suit PS4 video game, uh, the Advanced Suit Spider was their creation. There is no Advanced Suit Spider-Man in this design in any of the, the comics. So I find it interesting that these two suits are the same design. And this one they acknowledge as being originally in the comics before getting into the game. And this one they acknowledge as it never having an appearance in the comics. But then once it all came down to it, they both have the exact same suit. The suits come from the exact same mold, just different colors. But my personal favorite, Scarlet Spider. And you can put the little hoodie up. You can pull it right up over his head. It'll go up there. It has a wire uh, in the... Um, the front of the hood. It's really great. It's really cool. It's really, really cool. I like them a lot. Really pleased with them. Seems to be a sticker, just like the ones in the Homecoming tech suit. Yeah, it is. I've seen this. Uh, two or three of the uh, other Spider-Man come with it. I just wasn't sure what you're supposed to do with it. Is that what it is? Are you supposed to like stick it on the glass of your Detoff or on the wall? in your display, and is it supposed to represent, like, a splotch of spider webbing all over the place? If I remember correctly in the comics, they said that the spider webbing dissolves after two hours or four hours. What was the time frame that they gave us for the dissolving of the spider webbing? Because normal humans, you and I, um, we are unable to remove the spider webbing. So... When Spider-Man encounters a, a bad guy, you know, robbing somebody, he likes to just string him up and hang him from a light post or against a wall or something for the police to come and take care of him. And, uh, you know, they, they make a comment that the webbing will dissolve after a period of time, and I don't remember what it is. Um, and then at the same time, when he encounters uh, a foe for the first time, is one of his absolute very first tactics is to shoot a globbing of webbing right in their face. It blinds them because they can't see through it. Just just puts a big old ma mask on them. And if they are able to reach up and pull the webbing off, if they are strong enough to pull the webbing off of their face, then Peter Parker knows at that moment he doesn't have to pull his punches. If Peter were to ever get involved in a fight against one of us, should all things be equal and he be a real individual, if he were to get involved in a fight with one of us, for whatever reason, altercation, or if he's just encountering just a regular human that decides to do something bad, like steal a purse or rob a bank or something, he's not going to punch him with his entire force. He has you know, the, the strength of a, of, a, of, a, of a spider, more or less, a, a portion of strength. And as a matter of fact, when his um, adrenaline kicks in, he's stronger than the Hulk. So um, Peter is extremely strong. And uh, so that's one of his ways of knowing whether or not he can hit you with his full force if you're able to pull the webbing off of your face after he shoots you there. Uh, I kind of wish they did a 
66 Spider figure, right? Kind of miss that Spidey uh, or the 77 Spidey. No, I'm with you, man. Uh, I want them all. PS4 has given all of them to us for the most part and give, give me all of them. And like I said, also with the uh, Spider-Verse, make them all. Make them all. Make them all. Make all of them. Everyone. Make them. Make them. Make them. And remember Nicholas Hammond, the Spidey. Was that the Spidey from like the television series in the 70s or something? They made like this really campy, by today's standards, um, Spider-Man and Iron Man and, and uh, what were some of the other ones? Juggernaut some of the other ones that were in that. Is that what that is? Did I pre-order the upgraded suit? Yes. Two of them, actually. If I remember correctly. I don't remember why I ordered two. But I did. I sure do. I have them on order. Um, I wonder what Spidey Senses looks like on the other figures. It'd be the same. Um, pop it over. Put on advanced suit. Really easy to switch around. Just remove the head. And there's a little cutout on it. That just wraps right around that neck joint. I went with this because it's, it's blue and white. And he's black and white. And I think it resembles well. But we can put it on advanced suit, Spiny. The only one you wouldn't be able to put it on would be, for instance, the, the one that came with the magnetic head. Uh, which one was that? I think it was one of the Civil War or Homecoming Spidey. There you have it. An advanced suit. Spidey. So it works. It still tells the same story. No doubt about that. It is a spider sense tingling. Looks good. I just decided to put it on this guy. Only because he's the newest one. So the super glue worked on putting the magnet back in and the eyes still come out properly. I'm just pressing on the little, just press right up here at the top and then just peel it off from the front. Simple as that. I might put these on all the others. I don't know. I could put it on any Spider-Man. Let's say, for instance, you had a Tom Holland, I mean, a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man from Hot Toys. I imagine you could put it on that one, too. You can put it on any of them, right? A little Peter Tingle. Like I said, except for the one with the magnetic head. The only one it wouldn't necessarily work on specifically. You like it? Look, you think it looks better? It does look cool. Um, it's it's blue and white is what's in here, and he's blue. So it works. It doesn't look bad, not at all. It 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 it, it helps tell the story. You know exactly what's going on. You know, and if somebody ever said, "What is that?" You would just say, "Oh, that's his danger warning, his danger sense." And they would understand that, I would imagine. Spider-Sense. Spider-Sense tingling. Is Peter Tingle? God, that was so funny when Aunt May said that. So what else we got going on, guys? Anything else before we wrap this up? Looks like in what he, what's he looks like in an action pose.
I don't know what pose I would put him in. Um, one of my favorite things to do with Spidey is uh, have him do this where his feet are up and he's kind of like coming at you in this uh, interesting way. Because really, truthfully, in my opinion, it was McFarlane that kind of brought this to life where his knees are way up there. And you really can't necessarily get that. But if you can, if you can bend them all in, okay, as such, spread his, his uh, knees out as such, get one of these hands in between his thighs, as such, and the other one behind him, this would be kind of what I would want to do with Spidey. Kind of have him coming at you like this. And really, like I said, these I hate these little pose stands. I don't care for them truthfully at all. Something like this would be what I would want to do. And so then on this one, we would do the Todd McFarlane webbing. I don't have the height on that shelf to pose him like this. Uh, matter of fact, I won't be able to pose this on there, to tell you the truth. His little um, spikes reach the top of the shelf, actually. So, unless I'm planning on moving him to a different shelf, and I'm going to move all my Spideys, I guess, if I'm going to move them. We'll put the Todd McFarlane webbing here. And it'd be nice if there was like an extender on this webbing. So I can put like multiple pieces in there. And then we would put back here, so there's not really two hands that will hold webbing. So I would suppose what we could do then, in this other hand, well, we could do this. Which one is, um, here we go. Put his little iPhone in his hand. Whilst he's swinging, he's on his phone. Texting and swinging at the same time. Thank God for Danger Sense. Thank God for the Peter Tingle. But until I have a taller shelf, 
I really can't put any posing up there. I've got the iron spiders up there in their kind of a pose, which I duplicated from um, comics. Yeah, what the hell? I didn't get the wrist on all the way. And on all the way. Oh, it sounds like it's going on. It's not. There we go. So these, by the way, they're black with the white striping, and then on the back of the back of the hand, it's gray. These are a neat little white palm button for triggering the web shooters. This is that little white button in his palm triggered the web shooters. So that's a pretty good one. In my opinion, that's a pretty good one. Just off the top of my head, just throwing something together real quick. I think that works. That's cool. I mean, he's Spider Man. How can he go wrong? He's not their traditional red and blue, so if you want something different, there he is. I don't know if he's still for sale or not. I think all the Spider-Men are going pretty quickly. I can't blame that. Anyone for wanting to snatch up Spider-Man. Well, I think the Night Monkeys, for fact, haven't sold out. The uh, the black suit from Spider-Man Far From Home, and I don't know why. I guess because it looks nothing like Spider-Man. And it's funny, in, uh, um, in the comics... There was an episode where he'd gone to Germany, I think, and he didn't bring his suit with him. And so he had to buy a costume from the uh, costume shop. And it said on the back of it, um, The Spider in German. And so it's D-I-E, Die Spider. Kind of like um, the Bart, the, from The Simpsons, Sideshow Bob. Die Bart died. The Bart the. So I thought that was funny. So it was neat that uh, how they did that in um, Far From Home. Or no, wait, it was, um, what was it? The um, Spider Man um, multiverse where Miles had to go buy a Spider Man suit. I thought that was cute. I really like that. Learned about a new Battle Damage Thanos. The price increased by another 50 bucks to the last version with the armor, right? Uh, I, I'm still on the fence with that. I'm fringing for you, watching you do that to that figure. Um, will definitely increase the suit. Yeah, and that's the question, is how durable are these suits over time? You know what I mean? It makes you wonder what's really going to happen to these. Are, are they okay to put into this type of a pose and leave them? Or No. You know what I mean? We've seen the suits fall apart in the past. Deadpool, literally, um, the first release of the Deadpool figure, they um, falling apart all over the place at the wrist joints. And if I watch posing with Peter, he said can use saran wrap as webbing. If you stretch and twirl it out. It should give you the length you want. Interesting. I like that. If I come home and my girlfriend had done that to one of my figures, she may as well just kick me in the nuts. I'm with you. I thank you. Thank you. It does look pretty awesome. I did a pretty good job just throwing something together there out of the top of my head. Uh, I, I really need to take all my stuff off eBay. I don't want to sell anything else. I, I still have this extra Scarlet Spider if anybody's interested. I don't know if anybody... If you can get the Scarlet Spider anymore at all, I do have an extra Scarlet Spider. It's never been taken out of the box. 
straight from Hot Toys. Never touched by anybody other than Hot Toys. Um, so I'd still sell that. Night Monkey stand looks cool, uh, though, and the drone stand. Yeah, I agree. I'm really looking forward to that homecoming suit, the new homecoming suit with the drone. For fact, there's somebody that's made the drones. You can buy drones by themselves. I think for only like 50 bucks, relatively inexpensive. <sighs> Mikey, Night Monkey is just too expensive and does not much look like a spider band to me. I like the base of the of the deluxe edition, but I'm going for the black and red suit, which is awesome. Yeah, what's that? That's the uh, that's the uh, this is the advanced suit, right? What's the other one called? This is the advanced suit, right? What's the other one called? I sold my Hella figure. I really love that figure. Kate Blanchett is beautiful. She brought that character together so well. I hated that they never gave us like um, the Kate Blanchett without the, the helmet uh, for that. The Hella without the helmet. The only thing I hate, but I really love that Hella figure. I sold her and I sold my um, Mark 47 Iron Man. So I lucked out into selling that. Um, because that was before they re-announced, before they announced the re-release of the Mark 47. So I, I sold that. And I sold my Mark III um, Stealth, the gray one. And um, I hate selling any of my figures. The Mark III is one we know for fact that Robert Downey Jr. has in his possession. There is video footage of him playing with it on an interview. Um, where he takes it off of the shelf and he is positioning his Mark III stealth. He owns one, and um, which is a, a cool thing. And it was just a cool figure, and it was tight. He was a like new condition, and I sold him. And uh, by selling those figures, I was able to pay um, the bills that needed to be needed to be paid. And uh, so I made I, I sold them for a lot of money. Didn't make much money after it's all said and done. Because um, eBay and PayPal and everybody and their brother gets involved and takes their cut out of it. And it ends up being like almost 20% of what you sell it for after everything is taken out. Because they, they add their commission on top of the shipping, on top of the tax, and then on top of the selling final value fee of the product. And then PayPal gets involved and adds their commission on top of that. So after everybody takes a cut of your sold piece, you end up losing about 20% of it after it's all said and done. So it's pretty insane to have so much of your efforts go out of there. So the same token, when somebody's like, dude, you only paid $250 for this figure. How dare you sell it for 300 bucks? Well, um, if I sell it for $300, that means PayPal and eBay is going to take 60 bucks out of it. So now I'm at $240. So I just took a $10 hit on it? No. You're going to pay more so that I don't take the hit on it. You should have bought it from Hot Toys originally. If you didn't, you got to pay what you got to pay. But I'm not going to sell it for less than what I got in it in the first place. And if I can't sell it for more than what I paid for it, why am I selling it except to get space for another suit to replace it? But I'm not going to give it away. I'm not rich on any stroke of, of uh, any way that you try to add it up. I'm not rich. Just like any one of you guys, I spend my money foolishly on hot toys. I don't smoke. I don't drink, per se. And I, I don't carouse women. And, and uh, I don't waste my money on Starbucks every day and, and stuff like that. So I waste my money on these things. And to some degree... Some of them have turned into a profitable item. And there are haters out there that are all angry about anybody selling a piece for more than what they paid for it. But keep in mind, if you bought it for $250 and you list it for $250 on eBay, after eBay is done with you, you're going to get $200. Bucks. So you just sold a figure for $200 
that you potentially paid $250 for, plus shipping and tax. So you've essentially paid $280 or more for this figure that's over $250. John Deke and others are like, no, nope, you got to sell it for $250. That's what you paid for it. So you automatically are taking a $30 hit on that as it is. This is for $250 on eBay. They're going to take their 20%, 50 bucks. You're going to get $200 out of something you pay $280 on. You just lost 80 bucks. Don't tell me taking it out of the box, putting it on display, costs you $80? No. Sorry. It doesn't work that way. Hate to tell you. Ah, I love my Hella. I sold her because she was profitable to sell. Paid 200 bucks for her, sold her for almost twice that. Uh, and that's why I sold her. I needed to come up with $4,000 to pay hospital bills and incidentals and, and whatever else. And so selling those figures gave me that money. And I want to replace every one of them. I already ordered the Mark 47. I, I don't think I'll ever find another Mark III secret project. I don't think I'll ever find another Mark III secret project in that condition. Mine was in perfect condition. Perfect. And a lot of times when people are selling stuff, it's because they've been destroyed, they're worn out, or just junk. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've bought something that's come to me broke. I'm like, really, dude? For real? And then when I'm examining the photographs after it's in my hand, I can see the fracture in it. I can see the broken piece or the missing piece. But it's so minor at the time. You, unless you're in there with a the magnifying glass that can get every little millimeter on the figure before you hit that buy button, you don't see it. But they've divulged it in the photograph. So. Uh... Hope still has it. Should have sold here on YouTube or Craigslist. Well, none of y'all ever said Jack. None of y'all ever said, hey, dude, I'll buy your Hella. No one ever said, hey, dude, I'll send you some money for your Mark 47. None of y'all ever did. I told every one of you that I was planning on selling these figures. I told every one of you I was going to do it. Nobody nobody said anything. Uh, except for some of you jokers who are like, Hey, dude, I see you got that Mark 35 Red Snapper that you customized. I'll give you 150 bucks for it. I'm like, no, I'm not selling him for $150. First off, I paid $180 for him. And then I spent about 40 hours customizing him. And no, I'm not selling him for anything like that. So I don't know why you guys, some of you are like, you know, um, try to think that I'm like in dire straits in that regards. So, no, I'm not giving figures away. I'm not giving them away. I don't get them. You know, I've been lucky enough to have some figures given to me for free. One of y'all bought me a QMX Jean-Luc Picard. Thank you. I love him. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for that QMX Jean-Luc Picard. Love it. He's my captain. He's my captain. That's my Star Trek. You know what I mean? Out of all the captains, and I'm talking even Cisco, and Cisco's a badass, and Kirk is iconic. Out of all the captains, Picard's my captain. You know what I mean? So I'm pleased to have that. I love my Picard. And I got a, uh, a Mark VII Stealth for free because somebody was trying to cheat me on eBay. And he listed that he was selling a, um, he was selling a Mark VI, um, or I don't remember what it was he was selling, but that's what he said he was selling, okay? And then he shipped me the Mark VII Stealth. And this is back when they could be bought for like 250 bucks, and I paid like five or $600 for this figure. I don't remember which one it was. It was one of the Iron Men, so he shipped me the wrong one. And I contacted him, and I said, dude, you shipped me the wrong one. He goes, no, I shipped you the one you paid for. I'm pretty sure you need to read the description right there. It says Mark Six or whatever it was uh, for six hundred dollars, and this Mark Seven Stealth is not a six hundred dollar figure. You, you're you're trying to cheat me because I didn't cheat you. That's what you paid for. That's what you get. I said it's not what I paid for, and I'm not cheating you. I'm telling you the truth. So I contacted eBay, contacted PayPal. 
I'm like, this dude's a shyster. He sent me this, this. And it's a great figure. I already have one. I don't need another one. And it's not what I paid for, and it's not what I wanted. And so they contacted him, and they said, this is what the customer has received. And he sent us pictures, and I showed him all the, all the stuff, you know, and uh, with all the shipping labels on the box. And it said Mark 7 on the box and the whole nine yards. And so then the guy's like, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Go ahead and send it back to me. And I'm like, uh, you need to pay for shipping. I'm sending it back to you. And he says, I'll refund your money if you send it back. And I said, I'll gladly send it back. Send me a shipping label. He says, I'm not sending you a shipping label. So I contacted eBay or PayPal. I don't remember which one or maybe both of them. And they said, no, specifically our rules state that if he wishes to do this or if he screwed it up, he's got to send the shipping. He's got to pay for the shipping. So I told him. And he gets the same notifications from eBay and PayPal that they were sending to me. All this was through all, all parties involved got the same letters from eBay or PayPal or whomever it was. He got the same note telling him to pay for the shipping. And he's like, no, I'm not paying for the shipping. F you. You need to send it back to me. I said, I'm not sending it back to you. I'm not paying for the shipping for you trying to scam me. And PayPal or eBay or whoever it was sent him a message saying, you have whatever it is, 10 days to buy a shipping label or 30 days or whatever. If you don't buy a shipping label, we're taking the money out of your account. And they did. He wouldn't buy a shipping label. He wouldn't spend 20 bucks on a free shipping label to have his female back to him. And so eBay took, or PayPal took the money right out of his account and gave it to me. And I said, well, well now what do I do? And they said, nothing. Well, what am I supposed to do with the figure? Whatever you want. Well, what do you mean? He doesn't want it back, evidently, because he didn't send you the shipping label. So then he contacted me for about three months after that, telling me that I was wrong, that I was scamming him, that I need to do the right thing and send him the figure back. I'm like, I'm not sending nothing back, dude. The money I paid you for was for this figure X and shipping. And what you sent me was this figure Y. And now you want me to spend $20 or whatever to send you something back? So I'm out 20 bucks and get nothing? Sorry. So those are the two figures that I got for free, for, for, for real. And I really felt bad about that dude, but he was an idiot. I don't know what the hell his problem was. I mean, PayPal tell, told him, you need to pay for shipping, period. Read the rules. That's the rules of, of the game. And he's like, I'm not paying for shipping. And PayPal took his money right out of his account, totally took it all out, and gave it to me and told me to keep the figure. And so I did. So I've got two Mark 7s, stealths, because of that. So those are my free figures. I love the Mark 46. The 46, 47, and 48 are great figures. Great figures. I, I love the uh, the light-up body on the 46, 47. Looks great. Uh, if I'm going to pay what I need to, to go get the figure I want, yeah, for fact. There's a lot of grails that I, I have, uh, Loki's from the first Avengers. 600 or 800 bucks or whatever. Netflix Daredevil. 600 bucks or whatever he is. Yeah, if you want that figure, you got to pay for it. If you didn't buy it originally from Hot Toys, dude, you got to buy whatever, you got to pay for whatever it is that they're asking for. Supply and demand. This dude's got it. You demand it. You got to pay him what he wants for it if you want it. You don't get it. Sorry to say. Yeah, my Mark 7 lost its charm since it's not die cast. Um, I still like my regular Mark 7s. I really do. They're different than the new Mark 7 die cast. It's really, really different. So uh, supposedly, I guess then, the new Mark 7 is uh, more screen accurate. But I really like the Mark 7 no matter. And uh, just them standing there in just, uh, I don't know, I don't know what you would call this, or just the pose, the museum pose or whatever, I guess. Um, he looks great, even the old ones. And I have uh, one Mark Seven in the red and gold. And then, of course, I've got the, the white and the, and the black. Um, but that's the only Mark Sevens that I had, except for now. I bought two of the die casts. And I bought two because I knew that you were going to have to use one in order to be able to display the pod and I wanted to be able to display the pod. There's so much money just to display a pod. It's a ripoff. 
but I've got the pod in the other room with the um, you know the staple figures. So I've got I've got my Mark One up here in the Hall of Armor, um, but in the other room I've got the Mark Two armor unleashed in a uh, gantry, and then I have the Mark Three posed up against Iron Monger, and then I have the Mark Four in a gantry. I have the Mark Five over here uh, fighting Whiplash and uh, a couple of them transitioning and as well I've got the, the armors up here. Uh, the only one I don't have up here is a Mark III in the Hall of Armor. And then I've got the Mark VI in the, in the Stark Tower gantry and now I have the Mark VII pod uh, there and then I have the Mark Forty three in the other room with the other Avengers because that's when the Avengers had assembled to take on uh, Ultron and they're fighting Ultron in there. So that's what I have in the other room. That's the ones I see all the time. I only come in here whenever I'm doing a show and whenever I'm just feeling down. Whenever I'm just feeling down or, or whatever, I like to come in here and play with my figures. Play with my action figures and or repose them or organize them or dust them or just look at them um, but I don't spend much time in here if if um I, you know I love my wife she has the other half of the room it's her room even though she doesn't come in here anymore um, I don't have the heart to, to move or just anything in hopes that she'll be better enough and she can have her section of the room back um, but no I don't I, I don't have the room in here to make this my office office also from my um, my real job that I do as assistant administrator. Uh, I got the Mark One. I love it also, but we'll get the die cast. You better believe it. For fact, I'll be buying the Mark One die cast. The Mark One, I have the Mark One 2.0, so they made two versions of the Mark One. I don't know what the Mark One original version was specifically like. I really dig this Mark I 2.0. The detail on him is amazing. And he's very, 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 very fragile. He's kind of like the um, uh, Ultron Mark I, where he's, um, you know, little pipes and, and um, cables and wiring and all that is just kind of like everywhere. And uh, you, you don't want to muck with him. You, you put him in pose and leave him. So he's up in the Hall of Armor. <laughs> The one good thing about Iron Man non diecast is you can do flight poses. Um, right. Uh, I have the Mark Seven pod in a flight pose in the other room. Um, and I have the Mark 50 in a flight pose. Kinda. I'll show you. Here's the Mark 50. So I, I use the uh, really big, thick, um, articulated posing stand rod there for that. And you see he's a good four inches off of the ground. So he is up there. And it's a die cast figure. And this is holding well. But I get what you mean. The plastic ones, they're not the weight of a die cast but uh, so you can see he's definitely floating in the air but yeah you can you can put your plastic ones into a flight pose easier I've got on the top top shelf um, my 41 my 21 my 33 my um, what is that the uh, 15 30, 39, 17, 40, and 35, all in flight poses. They're up off of the ground as well. And uh, I've added to them the little flame effects in the bottom of their feet. And I've shown you guys these before. You can look at a room tour. You'll see them up there. And um, I'm really pleased with that. And I don't have to worry about them being there in that flight pose. But, yeah, I know exactly what you mean in regards to the weight of them as a concern. I'm putting them into flight poses for fact. 
100% perfect, for fact. But you see also on this other shelf where he's at, how much more height I have on being able to store the figures. So Spider-Man, the top of his shelf is this high, and this guy, his shelf goes up at least this much, you know? So he's, he's not touching the, the roof. So it's like 18 inches versus 12 inches or 13 inches, whatever it is. Both of these were bookcases uh, that I have them in, and bookcases weren't necessarily tall in the day. I mean, 13 inches for a bookcase is fine. It was like the standard size for a bookcase. Um, but this bookcase, I removed the center shelf out. It had two shelves, so it actually made uh, had two pieces of wood for shelving. So you actually had three shelves to store books on it. And I just took the two shelves out and then drilled the middle shelf in there. And it's actually drilled in there to have two big shelves to hold these. But I only have so many of these. I, did, I only have what, three of them to, to do that with. And I've used up all the spaces already. And my top shelf is the Avengers. That's because I've got, you know, a 20-inch Hulk over here and a, a Falcon and, and um, Groot and Thanos and all these figures. And, and I have Scarlet Witch and Vision and Spider-Man and kind of flight poses. And so they're all taller than this would be. Otherwise, I wouldn't put them over here, and I would use this for you know taller taller figures. But in order to be able to put the entire Avengers cast over here, for the most part, or like a, a swoop of, of all the MCU at one point, that's why they're over here. They're all grouped together. But then I have specialized. So, for instance, Yondu with the taller um, controller for his arrow won't fit on the 13-inch shelf over here, nor will Groot. So the Guardians of the Galaxy are down here in the bottom of this shelf. And then over here I've got Doctor Strange, because he's got this Sanctum, Sanctum, Sanctorum, or whatever it is in New York, his offices where he lives, more or less. Is that, that display is taller than this shelf. And then, of course, Thanos and Mark 50 are taller than this shelf. Colossus is taller than these shelves, so Deadpool gets his... Uh, day over here on this shelf, and then the Lady Death and Vampirellas on their posing stands are taller than these shelves, so they're over here. So that's who gets the taller shelves. So it's it's they're not necessarily better than these guys. They just require more more height. So that's why they're here. But I really need you know whatever this is, 18 inches, to be able to display these figures properly in shelving. That's where we are with that. And they're not deep either. A bookcase is not as deep as like a Detoff. I think a Detoff is, what, like 18 inches deep or something, and where these bookcases are like 10 or 12. Because again, how deep is a book really in, in its dimensions? You know what I mean? what it is nine inches nine inches deep and this one's 11 inches deep so that's a bookshelf and this is 13 inches tall and this is 17 and a half inches tall 17 and a half is like the minimum for a fact, and then even that wouldn't be enough. Um, Igor, I think, is 16 inches. I think Hulk is 16 inches. Yeah, uh, but you'll find me at Siri Emerald on Facebook. Siri Die Emerald on Facebook, if I remember correctly. Is it me or are all the die casts not in scale with each other? Well, the Mark III is out of whack. The uh, Mark III is one of the original die cast figures inside of a whack. I think the. I think. It was the Iron Patriot or the Hot Rod? One of those, I think, was the actual original Iron Man die cast figure. I think one of those is Dio. Three or something. So that was the first one. Then when they made the Mark III, which is like Dio 7 or something, he's smaller 
And I don't know what the deal is with that, but he really seems to be out of whack. But now, supposedly, all the die casts are properly scaled, supposedly. And here's the thing. How do you truthfully know? You know what I mean? Robert Downey Jr. is not six feet tall. I hate to tell you. and uh, But Tony Stark is supposed to be, I guess, six feet tall. So uh, six feet would be one-sixth uh, scale would be 12 inches. So unless your Iron Man figure is 12 and a quarter inches tall or whatever, then it's not six feet anyhow because you have to remember... You know, the, 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 the inch or so for the helmet and the inch or so whatever for the foot. So what would that be? 74 inches, right? 76 inches? 76 inches. You know, one-sixth of that. So, you know, that supposedly be what the case is. If you were to do it, you know, mathematically. Sweet. Thank you. I'll be happy to look at them on Messenger. I'm trying to get the way lesser big shots. Uh, Indiana Jones, Captain Kirk Picard, Steve Austin, Tom Baker, Fourth Doctor, and so on. Uh, I think Robocop, I think Robocop, I think Robocop was the first die cast figure, to tell you the truth, that Hot Toys made. I think that's D01 is the RoboCop. I don't remember. And I loved the RoboCop movies. I thought they were great, especially the first one. And they made a great Ed 209, and they made some great RoboCops, and I just never collected them. And um, only because, again, the cost involved. It, it's now not even in a situation where you buy one hot toy a month. They're down to the point, man, where you're cr cranking out like one a week at $300 plus dollars a, a pop. It's just $1,200 a month on hot toys. Holy smokes. You know what I mean? Bruce Willis, Rambo, Arnold, etc. Not all MCU. Uh, yes, it is. I have it. The first uh, the, the die cast. Yeah, it's one of the Robocops. I, I, is it the one that came with the chair? Is that the very first one? It looks great. It looks great. Especially if you're a, a, a you know, die cast fan. And no, I don't, I don't like all just MCU, because obviously, as I was talking about earlier, i got Vampirella and, and uh, Lady Death and Mir Automata, and I've got Velma and Daphne from Scooby-Doo. I've got Poison from um, Street Fighter, and I've got um, Leonidas and a Slave Girl. I've got R2-D2s, all the Astromechs. I need to build a little... Stormtrooper army for my land speeder. I need to get a a um, Obi Wan and a Luke for that, which is gonna make me want to have to get a Leia and a Han Solo and a Chewie and a Darth Vader, and that will never be an ending. That will be a never ending cycle. And I've got the arcade games, the Centipede and the Tempest, which actually work. And if you buy the change machine, it's also a USB slash power supply for the video game so you can plug the video games into that and have only one plug to plug to charge or power all of them and i guess that's it in regards to non-marvel pieces per se so the star wars astromech c3po's i got a ray because i got a pv8 um Obviously, Daredevil, you, you, you would just throw him into the MCU, although he's not. He's, he is Marvel. So, you know, Star Wars, Astro Mexus, C-3PO's, Poison from Street Fighter, Jean-Luc Picard, and his traditional um, seasons. Oh, gosh, which season was that? Uh, I guess, like, season six and seven suit. Don't remember which outfit it is, and um, Daphne and Velma, Miley Nidus and the Slave Girl, Lady Death, Vampirella, Near Automata. There you have it. 
I think my collection consists of a little over 200 figures. $300 a pop, more or less. I don't want to think about it. Uh, da, 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 I snagged Robocop Murphy and the Battle Damage. And Kit Bash Dick Jones. Dick, that was that was the guy that was like uh, that was the guy that was in charge of the Ed Two Hundred Nine and the and the, the police department or whatever, right? The organization. I don't remember. I meant to show that. I didn't mean to hide it. Uh, I'd love to try to get a Kit Bash Clarence. Boddicker. Who was that? You're still waiting for that Switchblade R2-D2. I am. Uh, he's on the way now. So I'll be unboxing him next, not next week. Next week I'm unboxing the Vampirella, Jose Gonzalez Vampirella. We're going to see how uh, that fights and figure compares to the other two Vampirellas in regards to Correctness. I don't think they have. I think they have Barbie doll breasts. There's no nipples on them, if I remember correctly. But I'm curious how the bodies go, um, if they're how the muscles are on them. Because if I remember correctly, uh, these two vampirellas, their bodies are just a little different in regards to the muscularity, muscularity of them. Muscle, 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 muscle skeletal. Muscles, muscles, the definition of the muscles on the body. How's that? I think she's hot. Vampire Earl's hot, Lady Death's hot, Poison's hot. Clarence, main bad guy in Robocop. Okay. Humex Jean-Luc, does it look like his shirt is trying to sink into his neck? He looks proper. Let me get him over here and show you. I love him. Thank you for that, guys. You asked not to be told who you were. I did when it arrived. Um, I didn't get that message until afterwards. But I won't mention your name again. Thank you. I mean, he looks to me like he's supposed to. You know what I mean? He appears proper, in my opinion. And what do you think? I think he's supposed to look that. I don't see anyone else when I look at it. I don't look at this and think, well, hell, that looks like Brad Pitt. Ah, oh, that's definitely Patrick Stewart. Proper looking uniform. He's got his T, Earl Grey, hot in his hands. His little engineering pad. The red ones are for engineering. The gray ones are what they had normally. Shoes look good. Pants look good. It's always funny whenever you stand up, you would have to pull his shirt down. Tuck his shirt down. Always looking proper. Really enjoy the Picard series. All I've seen is the first episode, but it looks really promising. Love this guy. Great. Stains his neck. I'll never be stripping him. I'm not going to put him in any other outfit. This is how he will be. Forever. Jean-Luc will be in this pose. He came with um, a uh, tricorder and a um, phaser. And you can put them on him. You actually, the magnets apply it to his body. And I did have them on there, but then I was like, ah, you know, I won't put them on here. Um, how many times really did we see him wear that? Two or three, maybe? Most time he's on the bridge of the ship. So that's where I put him in his office more, maybe, really. Don't want to lose his rank. That's right. I also have the CG, uh, CGI Xavier. 
on the same older head sculpt, constant stains his neck. Still love the figure. Papa shirt dips near the neck. I got Kirk, Spock, McCoy, Khan, Chair, and Picard. Nice. Not sure to get Scotty. Why not? You've gone that far. I mean, what are the five original? Kirk, Spock, McCoy, Scotty. Kirk, Spock, McCoy, Scotty. You have to get Sulu. Right? Get them all. Everybody, you know, why not? You got the chair. Why not? I'm not going to mess with the neck and look at it, but I don't see any stain on there. I'm not going to pull it down to look behind it. But I, I, I believe that, I believe you. I've seen the figures get stained before. Did it then, like, creep up the neck? Like Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark as he was being infected by the palladium or platinum, whatever it was, that he was using for the corrosion in his power generator and it was shooting up his neck when they seen him at Randy's Donuts. Is that what happens in the staining? Ugh. Sean Luke, why did you do that? Why did you jump? Why, oh why? Why, oh why? T, Earl Grey, pop. Jean-Luc Picard, USS Enterprise. No, I don't see any standing on there. That's good. What else, guys? Get some red shirts, right? You need a dozen of them. Because one's not coming back. One is not coming back. Admiral Kirk. That'd be cool. Oh, they're going to do them all. Nice. Oh, they are doing, you say they are going to do a Riker and a War for the Geordie? Sweet. My wife always loved Data. She loved Brent Spiner. Thought he was really neat. She loved data. All right, guys. I'm going to wrap this up. You can find me on, um, like I said, Facebook. I have one six scale news and reviews. Is really where I do the posting at on Facebook. Um, one six scale news and reviews. And if anybody wants to admin that channel or whatever, or you want to post on that channel, dude, I'll give you rights. Um, I've got um, Pinterest. That I used to put videos, pictures up on, which I haven't done in a while. And uh, I have a Patreon, Siri.Emerald or Siri Emerald. You should be able to find me there. If you wish to donate a dollar a month, it would be great. I mean, I get I would get 77 cents of that, by the way. They take 23 cents. And uh, like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, let them know where they can go. Once this scale news and reviews. And... Um, See y'all on the next video. Next week we'll be doing Vampirella. Take care. I love you guys. Peace out.